Let's go back to the basics. Determinants. Let's take a matrix of 1, 2, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 3, and let's use this matrix to transform every vertex on a unit cube of length, width, and height 1, aligned along the x, y, and z axes. After transformation, you'll see that we have a completely different object than we had before. But now I have a bit of a question. How much larger is this new transformed object? We could solve this problem with numerical integration by encapsulating both objects in a larger cube and performing Monte Carlo integration. After integration, we can say that the larger object is about nine times bigger than the unit cube. Now, let's think of this problem a little differently. During matrix transformation, most vectors will stretch and rotate. However, there are certain vectors that only stretch and do not at all change direction. These vectors are known as eigenvectors, and the amounts by which they stretch are known as eigenvalues. If we align the sides of our unit cube along these eigenvectors and perform a matrix transformation on each vertex in the cube, we'll find a rectangular prism that has not been skewed at all. This makes finding the ratio between the new transformed object and the original unit cube kind of trivial. It's simply the length times width times height of the new cuboid. Now, because we align the unit cube along eigenvectors, and each side of the unit cube is of length 1, after transformation, the new length, width, and height are all eigenvalues. So how much bigger is the object after transformation? Well, it's simply a product of all of the eigenvalues, which in this case is exactly nine. Here, I suppose it makes sense that any object's volume will increase by the amount of stretching in each dimension, which is exactly what we said before. The new volume is a product of the eigenvalues. Now, at this point, you might be thinking that we're pretty clever, but math magicians have at least one more trick up their sleeve, determinants. So let's do it. Let's find the determinant of our transformation matrix. It will be one times one times negative three minus zero times zero, subtracting two times two times negative three minus zero times zero, plus zero times two times zero minus one times zero, which is equal to negative three plus 12, or exactly nine. The same as we saw before. And that's that. A simple determinant can be determined by comparing the new to the old. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.